Ben, good morning. Thanks for joining us here. Great to be with you this morning. Thank you very much. Given, given what we're seeing play out and play out so dramatically, so quickly, where airlines are concerned and, pa and passenger travel, commercial air travel is concerned, uh, a $50 billion lending facility, is this, is this the right move for the airlines given the circumstances right now? I think it's the right move for the government to help an industry that really helps uh, grow the economy. Whether or not it's the right number or not, I don't know that any of us know. I think because we don't know how long that passengers are not going to want to be flying on airplanes or that it's not appropriate to have groups of people maybe in an airplane. We don't know that yet. So $50 billion, I think, is the right start. I don't know if it's the right total number, but I think it's an industry that employs a lot of people directly and indirectly. And so to support jobs and the overall economy, it's a smart way to spend money in this kind of wartime. I heard somebody refer to this as World War C, and I thought that was very funny. Eamon? Yeah, you know, Ben, I've got a question for you, which is that we're, all of this support for industry that we're seeing across the board, airlines included, uh, a lot of it is taking the form of loans, low interest loans to be sure, but loans nonetheless. And I wonder uh, to what extent can industries generally bear that kind of additional debt? I mean, if you're receiving loans uh, for a period of an unknown amount of time uh, and you have an unknown uh, period in which you're going to have basically zero income, uh, how can you repay that debt? And, and what are CEOs and managers doing to think about that problem? Well, it's not ideal, of course, because that would add debt and that would pressure balance sheets that are already being pressured by the fact that the companies are not taking in nearly the amount of revenue they were taking in just weeks ago. Now, I will say that having been through 9-11 as well from an airline standpoint, this doesn't feel like 9-11 in terms of the position of the industry. It does in terms of the demand mm. loss. But the industry was, uh, has fewer competitors now, thanks to consolidation. The industry has had about 10 years of good profitability, which has created strong balance sheets for these airlines. So that doesn't mean they don't need this money, but it means what it is, is it's extra liquidity because of the unknown. So just because it's there doesn't mean it will all be taken. And also included, in, also included as part of this is a proposal to for two years to not pay the federal excise tax. There's a 7.5% excise tax that airlines pay on tickets to the government. And the reason that the airlines proposed that piece of it, to not pay that for two years, is to essentially rebuild some of the, that balance sheet through that time. So mm -hmm. the debt isn't ideal, but it's better than not having the liquidity. <clears throat> That's what's important. Yeah, definitely some, some key nuances there to the discussion. Jimmy, I want to bring you back into yeah. this, uh, because especially when we're talking about the possibility of loan facilities to some of these industries, airlines or, or others that are being hard hit right now. Meantime, you've got headlines coming out of places like the Wall Street Journal focused on how this pandemic is going to test the limits of how much debt the U.S. can bear right now. And we've got a lot of debt. So what ultimately will this look like once we get through the worst? Listen, uh, you know, we've been talking about, you know, $750 billion bail, uh, bailout, maybe a trillion uh, loan guarantees. Look, I think it's going to be a lot more than that, and I don't think we can get too cute with this. Uh, if, for, for particular industries, if we end up just giving them cash, I don't think that's a bad thing uh, at this point. You talk about, uh, you know, we have to put, you know, compensation limits, sure, uh, certain pay raises, workers on boards, all this stuff, no buybacks. We're making this far too complicated. We need to move fast, make it simple, and we're at about 80% of uh, debt to GDP. Uh, if we end up uh, at 100% debt to GDP, I don't think that should be the concern right now. Yeah. Finally, Ben, I just want to get your thoughts on the other potential bailout or bailout discussion that's happening right now tied to airlines and aerospace, and that's Boeing. Uh, and the fact that Boeing is seeking funds right now and seeking aid from the government, not just for itself, but for its supply chain, of which there are so many uh, manufacturers and companies. How essential is something like that going to be? I mean, it's certainly when you see the sell off in the stock and the market just this week, um, it, it's a concern. Well, as we all know, Boeing was has been suffering from an earlier issue before coronavirus, of course, with the 737 sure. issues and problems, which put a lot of financial strain on that company, people not buying their airplanes as well as a result of that. Boeing is a really important company to this country. They not only make commercial airplanes, they make a lot of our military equipment as well. Yep. So I think if we're, if we're thinking about protecting the company, 
I mean the country, and if we're thinking about using government funds to help support industry, Boeing is certainly legitimately in that mix. They directly and indirectly employ millions and millions of people for lots of products, some of which customers see and a lot of which individual customers don't see.